You are now on with the ruckus. Who am I speaking to? Mike, yes, indeed, Reed. Mike, yes, indeed, Reed, coming fresh off of his victory Saturday night in Omaha, Nebraska, against Valenzuela. Uh, thank you for joining us. For those of you listening, of course, we're joined by top-ranked prospect Mike, yes, indeed, Reed. If you'd like to call in during the show, the number is 718-508-9852. Another win to his record. Still a good student, and uh, joining us here fresh off the victory now twelve and zero. So tell us, Mike, how do you feel? How do you grade your performance? Uh, you know, I, I feel I feel good about the performance. It was the biggest um, performance. You know, it was. I'm sorry, it was, it was my biggest performance in front of my biggest crowd. You know, so I, I feel I feel like I did a decent job. You mm-hmm. know, I got I got um got the exposure, met a lot of new fans. Um. You know, met uh, Bob Aaron for the first time, so it was a good trip, and I remain undefeated. All right, Ryan Bivens, questions for Mike? Yes, indeed, Reed. Um, I don't really have questions because he, he dominated the fight. He looked really good doing it. Um, I, I honestly don't have any critiques for you. Um, when I was watching you, you kind of reminded me of James Tony back back in his day. Um, was he one of your favorite fighters? Uh, you know, I really didn't even watch James Tony like that. Um, you know, I got the old, the heavier James Tony. I I didn't get the middleweight James Tony. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got the older, you know, the the, the big James Tony. But you know, from what I see, you know, he's Ali, pretty you slick. You got the Ali move, James Tony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, but like I was about to say, he, you know, he was a shorter fighter. You know, like myself. You know, he was slick, real crafty. So I can see the comparison. Um, what did you think of your opponent? I thought he was a real durable guy. Um, he came to win, you know, he came to fight. I believe my hand speed shocked him. You know, I, I think he he wasn't expecting me to be as fast as I was, and that kind of took him off his game, and he was never really able to, um, you know, adapt to my hand speed. But I think he, he was a real, real – he was a solid opponent. You know, I can see how he, how he became, you know – um, he was real solid. He took a, he took a real good body pop, a real good body punch. Um, so my head my head goes off to him. He was a nice kid, you know. After the fight, we took a picture, you know. Even at the weigh in, once I saw him, I never knew who he was until we weighed in. You know, he shook my hand, told me good luck. So he's a real mm-hmm. nice guy. Yeah, um, You're not supposed to be friends with the opponent. You're supposed to sucker punch him at the scale. I'm just <laughs> Yeah, that wouldn't have worked out well for him. <laughs> oh, don't listen to me because I don't know what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, uh, two of the scorecards were kind of close. You know, when it was announced, the decision was was um, unanimous. But I'm looking at box right now, and they got it listed as a split. Was, was there a mix-up? No, no, not at all. It wasn't unanimous. Well, it was a unanimous decision. Um, you know, two of them was seventy-seven, seventy-five, and I thought that was pretty close. You know, I. Yeah. I didn't see the fight being, you know, one round from a draw. I thought he did real good in the sixth and eighth round. Um, but other than that, I thought I dominated the fight. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, and I'm looking at box right now. It's just listening to a split decision. Maybe they messed up because when I watched it, they, they did announce it as unanimous. So, yeah, 77-75 yeah, seemed too close. The other scorecard is 79-76. That, that seemed about right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Let me ask you this, Mike. As we look, you know, you're on the undercard of uh, Terrence Crawford versus Ray Beltran at the conclusion of the fight. Terrence Crawford says, I'm done at 135. I'm moving up to 140. You're also at 140. You also are now cultivating a relationship with HBO. Do you foresee the con- the con- the collision course happening in the next couple of years? Um, if, if both of us, you know, continue to win, I, won't, I don't see why not. Um you know, I, probably a year or so ago, you know, at the beginning of this year, I would always tell people, you know, I like Terrence Crawford. And I still like him. You know, I, I like him. I like the way he fights. You know, he has that dog in him, and he knows how to adapt. And I think that's what I like most about him. But, you know, if they put me in the ring with him, you know, he's he's going to be my opponent. You know, but as far as his skill set, I like him. You know, I used to always say that he was one of the prospects. That I looked up to, you know, as far as fighting style was. But now 
he's a world champion um, coming to 140. So, you know, I'm ready for it if it happens, you know, and if it don't, if it doesn't, uh, he'll still, I'll still be a fan of his. Absolutely. This was a very, very active year for you. You fought one, two, three, six times during 2014. Do you foresee yourself continuing to be that active for 2015, or will you space out your your fights a little bit? You know, I want to be active. I want to be as active as I possibly can, and I think my team has did a wonderful job in, in getting me the right fight. And I think I've done a good job in the ring at showing them that I'm capable of handling that they give me. Um, also, with me being a southpaw, I fight a lot of conventional fighters, and I haven't got I haven't got cut. I haven't got close to cut once in a fight. So I think I do a good job at you know protecting my uh, protecting my head. You know, um, because headbutts happen when you get southpaws and conventional fighters. They always happen. But I think I do I do a real good job of moving my head and avoiding headbutts. So if I could you know healthy and continue to impress my team, then I would like to stay as busy as possible because, in my opinion, there's really the only, excuse me, the biggest um, setback for a young fighter is inactivity. And I right. haven't even been for two whole years, and I have 12 fights. So that's put me, you know, if I don't fight again, I look at some pro March of 2013. And if I don't fight again until March, that'll put me at fighting every other month, and that's still at a wonderful, wonderful pace. Definitely. Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, this is you. Um, you just had your first eight rounder. Um, how long before you you know you're fighting ten rounders and twelve rounders? You know, that's my team. You know, that's my team decision. If it was me, I would I would fight a ten round a twelve round in my next my next fight because I think I trained excellent and I didn't get tired of stuff. And I really get tired of sparring. You know, we we push ourselves when we when, you know in sparring we push ourselves. So I'm never really tired, and I always pride in myself on not being tired. You know, if I'm going to lose a fight, I'm not going to lose a fight because I didn't prepare in the gym. I'm just going to lose because the, my opponent was simply better than me. So, um, like like I just said, if I can fight a 10 round in my next fight, I'll fight a 10 round in my next fight. Who are the best guys you've sparred with? Uh, um, I can't – the best guy I've sparred with. I can't really – Pinpoint a name, you know, because I the the sparring you can name a couple. Yeah. Uh well, you know, I spar with Adrian Brown, you know, Adrian Adrian, you know, Adrian, he's shop. Adrian's shop, he's strong, you know. Um he wasn't the he wasn't he didn't hit hard, you know. Well, I'm not gonna say he didn't hit hard, but he wasn't power punch wise, the strongest guy I've ever sparred. But his ability to just move you and have you in the position that he wants you in. I see him move a hundred and 65 pounders, you know, wherever he wants. So um, I think he's one of the stronger guys that I've sparred against. Uh, Lamont Peterson, skill set wise, you know, smarts in the ring. He, he can set you up, you know, in traps. So I, I take that from Lamont Peterson. Uh, just recently, you know, I've been sparring with Hank Lundy a lot. And Hank, activity in the ring, you know, he, he, he got good activity. He keeps his hands moving, you know, he can frustrate you by uh, getting his head tall on a lot of uh, trash. So, you know, those are just a couple of, um, you know, world champions that I aspire with that I learned from. Yeah, how you, how you like um, Hank Lundy versus uh, Thomas Lorimer? Uh I think it would be a real interesting fight. Um, I think it would be a real interesting fight because if you look at Hank, Hank's shorter, you know, to, to be, what, 135? Hank's short, but Hank has long arms, you know, so I think Hank could either – try to fight on the inside or if he needs so he can move on the outside. I like Thomas a little bit though. Um not in this I don't know who will win the fight, but I'm just saying I like his skill set wise. He's good and strong. You know, he has good size for the weight class. So I'm interested, you know, um actually if I can I, w- I would like to make it out there to just see it because I'm a boxing fan and I just want to scout because they are around the weight class. Cool. So as we head into, let's see, Hank Lindy is going to be fighting uh, this Saturday night on the undercard. You said you will be attending or or no? Well, I'm going to try to. Yes, I'm I'm going to try to. I have um, you know, two uh two local guys that I grew up with. Uh, they might, be, well, they are fighting on the card, so 
I'm going to see, uh, look into it. They have a bus trip going up. I'm going to look into it. Um, I probably will be there, but if not, I'll definitely be watching. All right. Well, when school starts, going back to school? Yep, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm still in school. You know, I had class today, no days off. Um, I think school ends School ends next week. You know, the semester is over next week, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the end of the semester. And, um, you know, just the little winter break that we get, and I'll be back in school come January. You are a busy, busy young man. Keep up the excellent work. You know, it's a pleasure watching you develop and grow. And, you know, we look forward to seeing what the ring has to offer, what you have to offer the ring in the years to come. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I appreciate y'all having me on. You know, we always do it after the fight. Uh, like I said, I appreciate it. Okay, one night you have to sit in, and uh, since you are a boxing fan, you'll have to sit in and co-host with us, uh, one of the shows one night. Oh, yeah, we can make it happen. You know, we, we definitely can make it happen. I like talking. I like talking boxing. So we, whenever y'all need a coach, I'll be here. Yeah, we'll probably, we'll see. Maybe we'll have to have you back uh, next week when we have Hank Lundy on. That'll be a good show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we will. Pretty sure we will. Man, Hank, you know, we talk a lot of trash. Uh, we'll spar, you know. So it it, it 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 is all fun. You know, it's all fun. When I, the first time I fought him, um, I didn't know him. He didn't know me. But I'm a young dog, and I'm trying to prove something. So mm-hmm. that from there on, you know, from there on, we, we kind of develop a good relationship. And get it, man, it's work. You know, it's, it's still work. And we laugh in the rain, laugh outside the rain. But we, 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 we trying to, we trying to put a hurt on each other. I know what you mean, uh-huh. man, about Hank in his mouth. Is you see him in the gym here in Philly. He, from, from the moment you get in the gym, you hear him. And from the moment, and as soon as you leave, you still hear him. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and that he he is on. You know, he he is on motivation. You know, he'll he'll never have a problem motivating. You know, because he all he likes to talk. He likes to talk, and he'll like I said, he's his own motivation. You cannot you cannot say nothing to him. Nobody can say anything to Hank and he'll still be talking. And you know, that's him. <laughs> yep, you, know, yep. you know, that's him and if if hey, if it works, it works, you know. It works, it works. And I, I've seen him and Adrian Burr on the spot and they talk a lot in the rain, you know, and I, I just yeah. sit on the outside and I I laugh. You know, I laugh because both of them are funny. So We've had Hank on the show a couple of times, and, you know, whenever we have Hank on the show, it's something like, man, listen, anybody can get it from 135 to 152. <laughs> anybody can get it. I'll go up to 160 for the right but I'm okay. But no you, you know what? The funny part is I actually think he believes that. You know, he, he, he really <laughs> believes that, that he can go to 160. He really is and, you know, as a fighter, we have that fighter's mentality that, hey, if we have to, we have to. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, Mike, uh, you know, just in case we have some new uh, listeners listening, uh, let them know how they can keep up with you and uh, so they can keep track of you when you have your next fight. Um, you know, I post all of my fight information on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Twitter and Instagram, yes, indeed, underscore read. Uh, my Facebook, my yes, indeed, read. I would have to say I get on Instagram the most. You know, I get on Instagram the most. But, like I said, I have a fight date. I kind of post it on all the social networks because I have a lot of different followers on all the social networks. So, I like to keep, you know, team read, team yes and be informed of, about uh, what I'm doing in my career. Excellent. You're getting more popular, Mike. Keep some girls out your DMs now. You'll end up on Black Sports Club <laughs> online. <laughs> nah, they, they ain't sliding in my DMs yet, so I'm I'm still good. <laughs> Yo, just just don't don't start going to close with Adrian Broner, please. I mean, I know you're hanging around with him now, so I, I want nope, you nope, doing nope. the nightlife. Nah, don't spit no hot nah. 16 on nothing. We don't want to see you dancing all in the video. We don't want to see nothing. Nah, nah I, I leave that for them. You know, I leave that for them. If that's what they do, you know, that's what they do. I'm I'm more, if I go out, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out. I'll be in the cut somewhere. I enjoy myself, but I don't like to be seen that much. 
If I get wind of you spending a hot 16 on anything other than your bathroom or in your car, we don't we don't ether you bad. I'm just letting <laughs> you know. Hey, we we we've had fighters drop drop um beats on this show. Um, uh, show DJ has. Andre, remember? Oh, oh, oh nah. Andre oh, nah. Us when he calls into the show, he calls in and he interviews us. So you know that's a whole <laughs> other broadcast. <laughs> nah, y'all ain't gotta worry about that with me. Y'all ain't gotta worry about that. All right, Mike. Thanks for calling in. Keep up the good work. Keep working hard. Okay. All right, no problem. Thanks for having me once again. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, if it's after the next fight or if I, you know, come and be a coach, which I, you know, is always a pleasure. All right. Take care. Mm. All right, y'all do the same.